I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 31st of October, 2022. It's officially Halloween, and welcome to my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Today is Monday morning, and we have a lot going on today. The weekend is over, obviously, because it's Monday, and we are dealing with all of the stuff having to do with the big fallout that happened on Friday. So today we have a couple things going on. One is we have a house showing to go see in the afternoon because I had found this house last week in Fatima and decided it was not the right house for us. It was not something that we wanted. And then when I stopped and I thought about it for a little while, I said, actually, maybe maybe it works out really well. Dominican needs to come see it. So we went back and looked at the house with everyone. And uh, so first of all, this morning, what a day. So we started off uh, the day just dealing with lawyers and stuff. We have so much like paperwork and legal un un unwinding that has to be done and so many questions about how things are going to go moving forward because we lost a key man in the company uh last week and so we are just scrambling to make sure all of our ducks are in a row to make sure we have everything the way it's supposed to be to make sure that we're protected uh just everything there's just a lot of pieces and it's all fine like it's it's just when you do but i talked about this i think on friday like there's just when you do business anywhere um there's sometimes you have a lot of business stuff to do there's a lot of overhead to doing business and sometimes it's complicated and sometimes it's it's nerve-wracking uh and sometimes it's depressing and sometimes it's really successful and just just all of that range of things is part of the process and this is part of the process and some days are very hectic and there's a lot going on and sometimes you don't have a lot of ability to do planning and know exactly what's going to happen uh, and that's kind of where we are there's a lot of unknowns right now and that's frustrating because we're like oh we're not exactly sure what we're supposed to be doing next um do we do we open something close something sell something buy something invest divest like we don't know All right so there's just a lot of of figuring out what we want to do what we should do what our options are uh, to prepare. So that is really the whole front of today is us dealing with that stuff. So that's not bad per se, but it's it's just a lot going on. I'm going to turn this around. There's a turkey hanging out here by the park. That's a very white turkey. All right. So that was the morning. Um, and I was, oh, there's this little doggy barking at me. I was wondering where that barking was coming from, but there he is. He's just little. He's so small. You probably, probably can't even see him. That is pretty funny. And uh, so I mostly worked in the office. Paul and Dominic were running around dealing with all that stuff this morning. Mostly I'm not the one who has to deal with it, but it's still like I have to hear about it. No. And uh, then early in the afternoon, we went and toured this house. And the reality is we all really liked it. It is a modern house in Fatima, which is a beautiful neighborhood. It's basically next door to April, uh, which is really handy because we like to hang out with them. And uh, it has enough space for the rest of us while having the absolute most amazing dedicated space just for the kids and that's the thing that really overall it doesn't have the space for the dogs that we need it's it's quite small for us there's a lot of i don't think it works and that's why i didn't even consider it when we were first there but after i stepped away and thought about it it was like well i could compromise on a whole bunch of stuff because the space for the kids is so good they would have their own floor with their own dedicated shared living room each with their own bedroom and then a shared bathroom with a, a private balcony each and it's like how can how can you not want that for them it would be such a great living experience for them to have this second floor place uh, where they could they could really make it their own and uh, and hang out <coughs> so we, we we looked at it and we said well this really is a really good option we have some options that we're supposed to go look at tomorrow some of them sound pretty promising so we're not making any decisions at this time but we did look at it and and really had a well that, that really has a lot of potential so uh it was it was good that we went and looked at it um and they're asking way too much but you always ask really high and then you negotiate down pretty significantly it's sort of how it works here because we know the houses in the neighborhood um we know that a house literally twice its size in a slightly better position within sight of its front door so screaming distance away really 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 close on the same park uh, but in a better position that house is 800 at twice the size of this one so this one should be between 650 and 700 it's still very well appointed it's still a great neighborhood there's a lot of things you still pay a premium for but it's certainly not worth 800 and they're asking nine so under no conditions will we pay more than 700 and we are hoping to be less than that if if we decide it is a house that we are interested in that is something that is yet to be seen but it's certainly high on the level of interest 
list. So at least we've, we've now looked and found multiple things that we were interested in and one that we were sure we were gonna take and then turn down because we just got a little bit uncomfortable with it. And, and this one, but again, it kind of feels like a compromise, uh, but it's so good for the kids that I'm willing to make a bit of a compromise. So we'll see. We'll see what it ends up being that we decide to do, but uh, there, are, there are options here in Leon. Something that we have noticed though, is that uh, while the prices are great and there's a million things available, to find houses to show, to see is, that are being shown is so impossible. The, the system that is in use is so bad, the mechanisms that everyone uses to show houses, and the number of people who are willing to show houses is so low. So many people know that the prices are so bad, so they're not taking the time because what's out there is not being rented. What's out there is not being sold. Things are um, basically nothing selling, so the people who are desperate are renting, and because the desperate people are renting instead of selling, the people who would normally rent and are, are being knocked out of the market and are just giving up. So a lot of things are just being kept off market. Uh, so even though there's a ton out there that would be sold or would be rented if they had a potential renter or buyer, they're not really getting one. And so it's, and then of people who are putting things on the market, often they're completely unrealistic, like the place that we talked to last week where we knew what the what the value should be and they wanted five times almost four times between four four and a half times what we decided that the value of the property should be and that's just absurd and will they get someone to pay that no they're going to keep it for a very long time in five years ten years will they get someone to pay that maybe how much money will they lose in the interim we don't know but a lot most likely right a bug just went down my <laughs> wow it's like little gnats <laughs> a little bit of protein and uh you know, we know they're gonna hold on to that for a really long time, or if they sell it, they're gonna sell it to someone who's gonna really lose big, but it's hard to believe anyone would find and go look at a property like that who isn't like us. And, and honestly, for that particular property, we were such the perfect buyers. If we put its value that low, nobody else would come close. And they're like, oh, we want four and a half times what, what you're willing to pay for it. And we're like, what, what now? Who do you think is gonna buy that? We have to be the best buyers you could possibly imagine. There are so few people who want that amount of space. So few people who have businesses on that side of the city. So few people for whom it would make sense to own at all, let alone invest in. Absolutely crazy. And uh, it, it's been empty for years and is in terrible disrepair. So now they're pumping in all kinds of money to get it ready for no one to even look at. The chances that anyone will even go view it approaches zero. There are so few possible buyers and I don't, I don't, you know, begrudge them for hoping to find an outrageously high price, but they need to be realistic that it is probably going to take five to 10 years to sell that property. That is a long time to sit on something and take a big chance. What if it doesn't sell in that amount of time? What if it falls into disrepair and they have to put in all those repairs again? And one of their arguments, of course, is, well, it's got all marble, it's got all mahogany, but we don't want marble and mahogany. Those aren't things that we like. We don't like the way that it looks. They're okay. It's fancy, but if we were putting it in, we would put in cheaper materials that we feel work better. And that just because you use an expensive material doesn't make it worth anything to someone. In some cases, it may make it worth less. And that's kind of where we are. The maintenance on the place will be too high so that takes a lot of our interest down that we just don't want to have to have an ongoing cost like that. We want more of uh, a cheaper situation for long-term living if we're going to be going to be making it a permanent home instead of renting. So just that kind of stuff, There's just it's, it makes for a really tough real estate market. And we'll see. We keep looking at places and there's, there's a lot of options, but finding things that work for us, we're so unique in what we need that uh, that makes it quite hard. All right, that was our Monday. There's a lot going on and it's tough because I'm so busy. I can't really tell you guys much about what's going on. So I can't go into to like that and I don't have time to go out and do a lot of videos. So it's all very hard, uh, but I'm gonna do the throwback in just a minute. But before I do that, please remember to like and subscribe, put your comments below, ask your questions, whether it's about me or living in Leon, Nicaragua, traveling around the world, whatever. Uh, I do a lot of things and uh, let, um, share with your friends on social media because I don't have Facebook or anything like that. And if you'd like to support the show directly, you can buy me a coffee with the links down below. Man, there's a lot of things I gotta say at the end of the show. I'm gonna do the throwback in just a second, but I will see all of you tomorrow. All right, it's time for the throwback, 31st of October, 2019, three years ago, what were we doing? This is a big one, sort of, I mean, it's quick, 
But three years ago, today, we had to move Rachel out of her apartment finally, the actual big move out. And we didn't finish. She still has stuff that has to be done tomorrow. This is important because tomorrow, she and Alan and I are heading to Nicaragua. Uh, so she's moving out of her apartment finally, completely, on the same day that we're leaving the country. This is, this is kind of insane how last minute she has left things. So that was a big scramble today. I am home alone. The family left yesterday. If you watch yesterday's video, three years ago, uh, they went to Houston for Halloween. And because of moving Rachel and getting ready for the trip and because it is a work day and we want to make sure that there's no extra time with me away from the office, I am stuck working uh, from here. There's just a lot that needs to be done. Rachel needs me and um, work needs me and the dogs need me. So I just had to be here. I could not go to Halloween this year. Uh, Mia was a maniac, tore the house apart again today. That's just, she is so nervous. It is such a hard thing for her. And uh, uh, then Kat came over this evening. Um, so it's cool because Kat has been on the show now years later. So people can be like, oh my gosh, Kat has been in the show, just didn't appear on it very much. But she does appear in some of the old shorts, uh, which will come up at some point. Um, and that was pretty much it. Had to pack tonight. Tomorrow, Alan is flying into town and we are heading off to Nicaragua. This is so exciting. We've been looking forward to this for so long. Alan and I have been planning this trip in some capacity or another for two or three years. Uh, so it's pretty crazy since I believe uh, late 2016, early 2017, something like that. We've been planning uh, on doing this trip. So um, really big deal uh, uh, that we're doing it now. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really cool. Uh, and I hope to have good throwback content for you guys from that as well, because there's, there's good stories and uh, a good adventure that we had in Nicaragua. All right, that's it. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.